No. There is a rule in public universities that if it is, if it is subject has less, but less than 10% chance in the curricula, you can assume that it is okay. So we should make a limit somewhat that if it is not more than 10% chance, we should not report back to the UGC. Number three about UGC is UGC gives some funds to the uh, private universities for R&D activities. Why don't you make a rule that this R&D activities in the private universities should run on issues which are faced in the industries. So UGC may sit at the middle as we are not having good interaction with the industries and universities. So university, university, UGC may sit at the middle with funds, call the uh, public universities, call the industries and tell, meet them over here and give the fund to the industries and tell them you have to do this type of local R&D uh, research. So there are many ways and with the existing fund and facilities with some initiative we can do uh, lots of things. Uh, national University, I think we should really, really give a hard look to the National University. Earlier how National University, how these colleges are run, the regional universities used to look after the regional colleges. So Russia University, the Russia Division, Kula, um, this uh, Chidang uh, University, Chidang Division, they, they looked after. But at one point of time, it was found that they cannot do justice because they themselves are busy and so many colleges came up, so it was difficult, it was affected the quality of the mother universities. So that, then, then it was delinked. Delinked and all the colleges are brought under one umbrella. It is surprising, you see, four or five universities could not take care of all the universities and one university is taking care of all those colleges. It cannot happen. Simply it is not possible. Sitting in in, in, in uh, the northern part of the country or in southern part of the country, teachers are coming to the to Dhaka, the course, exam, questions, scripts, so many things are to be handled. It's impossible. Immediately my suggestion is that, Honorable Chairman, that the private national university should be split into four national universities under in, in former four divisions, four or seven divisions. Yes. You do that, you decentralize this. Education should be decentralized. Administration should be decentralized. You cannot do, do everything in a centralized way in a country of 160 million people. It's a big country. So unless you do something about the national university in that way, I think it is in the uh, process some thinking is going on. And if it is done, then you must hold the exam properly, speak the, uh, announce the result properly and make the development. You see, there are so many colleges, there is nothing inside actually. Even the new, new public university, I am absent with Pabna Project Vishwavidala. There are so many things, but teachers, horrible. You may make universities, but there is no teacher in the public universities outside Dhaka. Nobody wants to go out of Dhaka. So that should be solved out. Solved. Laboratories are not there, but we are making universities. So these are the very, very, very few issues that we should solve in, in a very integrated way, not in isolation. So some strategies should be brought out, keeping all these things together, not in isolation. Well, there are so many things uh, to be told. It's a very important issue and important for the country, of course, and also for exporting the things outside of the country. And uh, uh, Honorable Chairman of the Standing Committee is over here, and I'm sure things will be looked into, and some studies should be found out so that uh, this sector, unless education is taken care of, nothing will happen in the country. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Anwar Singh. Uh, now we will open the floor for question and answer session. Uh, unfortunately, we have another, about 15 minutes time to dedicate to this. So, <coughs> you can please uh, raise your hand and when you put up your question, you can please also mention uh, the person from whom you want the answer.
So we go to the question of the center. Mr. Rowley. My name is Rowley and I'm the ex-president of BASIS. Uh, uh, my, uh, I'll take two to three minutes time, but it will not be a direct question, but it will be a, uh, a little comment on the discussion over here. Uh, from Sir uh, from Mohit Khan and also our uh, BC answer, both of them mentioned about one project is the IPSA project. I would like to highlight highlight on that project and give a little insight and background of that project to our uh, guests over here. Uh, when uh, from the industry and the uh, academia together with the 16 university, we sat together. We thought that to bridge the gap between this uh, universities and and the industry, where we will uh, need to work together uh, in a program that will bring the industry to a level. Which, uh, what we are talking about is global IT service market level, and also it will help the uh, unemployed graduates to get a job very quickly. After a lot of uh, hard work, a lot of hard work, a lot of meetings between universities, industries, later on we submitted a proposal to uh, the ministry. Ministry, uh, well, uh, at that time the interim government was there. After just one meeting, looking at the merit of the proposal, it was decided that we should go forward. And ministry assi uh, uh, assigned BCC to take it forward. After that, a body was created, and it, the further program was detailed out. The whole project was done, and the whole target was to give a big lift to the industry that we are talking about, and also the university graduates that are coming out and unemployed uh, graduates. Unfortunately, further, the, the government changes the political. Can we have a big hope because the mission with the digital Bangladesh? You need people to work on the digital Bangladesh. It's not the policy only that will take the digital Bangladesh. So what happened uh, when it went to the more formalization? Finally, it was put back into the coffin and into the cold storage. And we was totally stoned that after so many of intellectual people and knowledge-based people in the society, in the industry, who has worked hard for <coughs> months, and the result is like this. And it gives an impression on the government itself. The government is not uh, taking consideration of that. Uh, uh, people who are worked here, the industry has worked here, and also not considering that the people, uh, the boys who are underemployed and not employed, that it, it may bring changes to them. And it was just been put into the coffin and put in the cold straight. And I believe our my uh, parliament member is here, and he is also in the, the into the education uh, committee. And I would at least expect from him, looking at his background, his family, his educational and intellectual capabilities, that he will bring this matter back to life and take this forward. Because we really have worked hard for this. Thank you very much. Thank you very very much uh, on this at this particular point because. I was also a very unfortunate member of this exercise and put up my valuable, if my time is valuable, which I think is valuable, uh, put a lot of my time into this project and Mr. Rowley has already explained the fate of the project and uh, I will definitely re-emphasize on the issue and uh, I will definitely like to see that it goes to its logical uh, destination. Thank you. Next question. Yes, for the back. Thank you, sir, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, no, we just say the PC, laptop, or like that. But this is not the concept to make the digital Bangladesh because computer is just a device. If you don't send any content, you will not be able to form the digital Bangladesh. I am Mominu Lamin, business operation in charge, therefore in Computers Limited, and we have a strategic business unit, infobangla.net, country's largest info commercial web portal. What we are planning, we, are, we have a vision plan to set to over 12,000 QX points that will be touch screen monitor digital queues all over the Bangladesh. And we have a plan to set up these QX points as a, to create employment, 
uh, so that people who are just uh, educated or SSC or HSC passed who can earn more than 15,000 to 20,000 taka by taking this kiosk ownership. We are providing content on the kiosk. In our web portal, there are lots of facilities. Uh, what we by taking this opportunity, anyone can earn the money. And we take, we, what we are planning that this kiosk we want to set up in the rural areas, especially in the uh, schools, college, or in the establishments. So my question is, can we get any help from the government or from bases to set up this kiosk fund in the school or any secure establishment in rural areas so that we can provide uh, ICT contents to those kiosk operators or the students of those schools so that they can earn money uh, each month by selling our content and, sell and making people aware of the ICT and about the digital Bangladesh. Can we get any help, sir? Uh, our honorable uh, in his, um, you know, chairman's um, speech, but if you like to make a few comments on this now. <laughs> okay. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a competent authority from the government side to answer to your question, but this, uh, you know, seminar, every part of, his, uh, of this is being recorded and will definitely be, you know, put forward to the uh, right uh, uh, people and department and personality. I think they will take note of it. Thank you. Next, uh, Mr. Uh, Atikarapani. My name is Atik Rabani.